Hello classmates, good day. We are ODL Group 4. I am Joy Annabel Jimenez. Hi everyone, I'm Karen Hapuk Flores. My name is Lester E. Maon. And today we will be sharing to you the strategies in teaching poetry. So what's in it for us? At the end of the lesson, our classmates are, ex are expected to first adopt competency-based learning materials in teaching poetry which respond to the various linguistic, cultural, socio-economic, and religious backgrounds of learners. And the second is to identify a range of assessment strategies in teaching poetry that address learners' needs, progress, and achievement, which are consistent with the selected competencies. Craft a learning plan according to English curricula that develops higher order thinking skills of learners using poetic text and conduct a teaching demonstration of de developmentally sequenced learning process using innovative teaching principles, skills, and strategies for teaching poetry. Reading aloud. Asking a question that more than a yes or no. Reading aloud. To youngsters who are beginning to read is a very beneficial practice. It exposes a child to rich language, proper grammar, and exciting new ideas. It engages and encourages a child in formation. It stretches a child's attention span and ability to focus. Choral reading. Asking a group to read what the strengths are. Choral reading is when an entire class or a group of students read aloud in unison. Choral reading improves pupil fluency, self-esteem, and drive. Students who are normally self-conscious or uncomfortable about reading aloud have built-in supports because they are reading aloud together. Silent reading Asking to read inside their mind. Silent reading is a reading tool that allows you to read without saying anything. This might be include sub vocalization or silent speech, which is described as internal speech created while reading a word, allowing the reader to picture the sound of the word as it is read. Hello everyone, my name is Karen Hapuk Flores and today I'm reporting on literary appreciation and valuing in or off poetry. So first of all, what is a literary appreciation? Um, it is the ability to simply understand, enjoy, and evaluate works of literature. In this lesson, we are going to uh, appreciate poetry. But first, um, what is poetry? Poetry, according to the dictionary, is a literary work in which special intensity is given to the expression of feelings and ideas by the use of distinctive style and rhythm. So what is being valued in poetry? There are um, elements of poetry in which it serves as basis in evaluating to measure its value. Um, the elements are first um, form or structure um, it is uh, the poem's appearance this structure can be the style of how the lines stanzas in paragraphs are created the next is the sound device uh, the sound device of poems are rhythm, rhyme, alliteration, consonance, assonance, and onomatopoeia. Next is imagery. Imagery are the words that puts appeal to the reader's sense of sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. The fourth is the mood or tones. Uh, it is the feeling that the author chooses to give in the poem. And lastly, the theme. 
the theme is the main central idea of the poem. Uh, now let's go to lesson design in teaching poetry. First, um, poetry, poetry involves arts and expressions. In teaching poetry at school, teachers allow students to understand um, points of views and emotions. This helps students in connecting their feelings at a deeper level where they can become more empathetic and accepting. So in teaching poetry, any teacher could just um, make, uh, make their own design on how to teach students about poetry. Basically, the most important things to always include in teaching poetry are the following. Here are six strategies in teaching poetry. Um, first, read it aloud and few times. Uh, students have different level of understanding, so um, some may just uh, learn, uh, take it easily, while others take it difficultly. So. Uh, reading aloud and um, doing it a lot of times could actually help uh, make the student understand that poetry better. And uh, next, the second is study about the poet before reading their poem. Um, understanding or learning about the author actually makes um, a difference in understanding the context of the poem that they have made. And uh, next is Identify and define words so students do not do not know. So, uh, in poems, some words actually are uh, difficult words. So, it's important that the teacher is there to guide the students, help them understand the meaning of uh, those words. And the next is visualize the images, clarify words and phrases. So... Uh, the teacher uh, must be there to just uh, lead the students into the right uh, way of visualizing the poetry. It is also the teacher's job to uh, clarify the words and phrases that's in the poetry because some may be uh, just difficult and yeah. And next is uh, teach figurative language to students. Um, I think uh, it uh, figurative language is always in the uh, learner's curriculum. So most poems or almost all poems actually have figurative language in them. And students must know. And the last is to evaluate the poem's theme and the uh, allow your understanding to grow so that's all for the lesson design in teaching poetry thank you for listening so thank you very much for sharing miss karen and now our next topic would be about materials in teaching poetry and so class we know that in teaching literature it is basically choosing the right text that we think would best fit the interest and needs of our students so with regards to teaching poetry we know that there are various resources available online and archives at the library or books that we have at home uh, however, we must consider factors that lead to effective teaching of poetry to our students. So when we're teaching, it is very important to provide our students their own copy as we also have our own copy and notes to share to our students. So here, as you can see on our slide, I have provided a few websites that we can use for, uh, for uh, retrieving lesson materials that we can use for our class. So first we have poets.org. This is a resource site for poetry and poets. Here you can learn about the history, meaning, and types of poetry, as well as terms often used when reading and studying poetry. There is also uh, the resource page here in this website, a series of links 
wear a series of links to various poetry sites for daily poetry, poetry organizations, biographies, and so on. And there's also a selection of poetry from various famous poets, including uh, William Shakespeare, Robert Frost, Emily Dixon, and many more. There you go, we have the next one, Look at, uh, LOC, or this stands for the Library of Congress. Dot gov. So this is a collection of archives and learning materials as well. This is a very broad, this is a very broad website. It features wealth of poetry and literature resources for teachers and students as well, incorporated into the classroom settings, including remote learning environments, just like our ODL program here at the University of the Cordilleras. And the last one we have poetryoutloud.org. Um, here this is kind of unique because it provides videos of poets um, reading their pieces. pieces. Uh, they also conduct a uh, contest you know, for uh, students reading their own pieces. And here we have one of the most helpful website that we can use as teachers, poetryoutloud.org. Here, they compile videos of poets reading their pieces, and this website encourages students as well to join competition and enhance their reading skills. Okay, taking a look at the next slide, we have four pictures. Can you give me one word using these pictures or one word that would best describe the picture? So, any word. Mm -hmm. Yes, you could have thought of, of course, poetry or literature, or maybe reading, or even poets, right? Yes, so as you can see, that is an activity that we can use for uh, teaching poetry. A four picture, one word in four picture, I should say. So we know that some students find studying poetry and literature per se boring. That's why it is our job as teachers to provide activities and instructional materials that uh, we think would be helpful to awaken uh, the interest and curiosity of our learners. So here I have provided some samples of uh, instructional materials such as collage, uh, slogans, uh, some games also. We can also integrate, we can also include memory card games, puzzles, and such and so on there are not only the website but we can also take advantage of the media and technology to boost energy and interest of our learners so let's listen to this one because i'm a woman phenomenally my 20s are the warm-up for what i'm really about to do yes so aside from reading we can also encourage our students to listen to some videos or audios available online and now we have provided a few applications that we can download. We have Poem Daily. Poem Daily are introduced, uh, rather, poems are introduced daily. So just like OOTD, we have the poem of the day. And they also provide archives of fa famous poets. Another application is Rhyme Now. Here, students can find words that rhyme by choosing syllables and frequency or sounds like and uh, starts with you know some students find it difficult to rhyme uh, their poem so this would really help them that's all for the materials of teaching poetry we know that you can also think of other uh, resources or materials that you can use in teaching poetry so that really depends on you as a future teacher and now I'm going to talk about the assessment in poetry of course in this course of uh, motivation and learning assessment uh, I mean assessment is very vital because it influences our students ways of performing their learning task so it's not only for the sake of grading system, but this would also serve as uh, their assessment or way of monitoring their learning process. So of course, we can use rubric, rating scales, checklist, journals, reading responses, and literary criticism reports. Many teachers find rubrics a helpful and functional assessment tool. So we know that rubric is a predetermined set of criteria. We have two types of rubric. We have holistic. Uh, this is the evaluation of the whole performance of each criterion while analytic 
is uh, an evaluation of each criteria and is being checked separately. And now we have the next assessment, rating scale. So rating scale is the criteria checking quality or frequency of student work. So here it helps the student uh, point out their areas of improvement. They'll be able to know their areas of strength or their weaknesses. This checklist. So this consists of statements that correspond to specific criteria. It normally answers questions yes or no. So this is a little bit easier than uh, providing rubrics or reading skills. So an example here of poetry writing uh, checklist for free verse. So we can ask, did the student uh, write about one topic? Did he include at least three poetry elements or did he use line breaks or was he able to write at least two stanzas and so on we're just going to check whether he or the student was able to do that or not so that's for checklist and of course we have journals journals serves as a reflection of progress it allows students to review where they started and track their improvements journals serve several purposes such as uh, reflection, critical thinking, and connection. So here it can be in a form of, say, for example, a diary, or you can actually ask your students to compile their um, composed poems in a notebook. They can make a collage, or they can design it based on their own interests. So that way, it would help them track their uh, improvement or works. And so here I remember my teacher who uh, asked everyone to buy a diary notebook where we have written different kinds of poems with different styles and content once or twice a week. Well, it was an awesome experience because it made us excited to realize how much poetry uh, we've written, how much poetry we've written during the semester. So we can be creative in asking our students to come up with different styles such as diary and another assessment tool is reading response so in reading response the reader is essential to the meaning of a text for they bring life to the text the purpose of reading response is examining explaining and defending your personal reaction to a text so the challenge of a reading response is to show how you connect with the text. So this can be in a form of collaboration, um, discussion with the student after reading a literary piece. You can ask them questions, technical, literal questions that you can get from the text or uh, basically sharing their own experience after reading the text. Finally, we have literary criticism, an interpretation, analysis, and comparison of the work. Opinion supported by evidence, we can also dig into the theme, styles, devices, political, and historical context of the work. So after reading a work, it's time for evaluation and digging deeper into the anatomy of the poem, integrating your own ideas with your other insights gained from researching or really thinking about different point of views. So one example activity is letting your student critically analyze the literary say literary approaches or models used in the text or also you can ask them to indicate uh, language devices used in the piece this can be in a form of again an essay a reflection paper or this can be in the form of uh, dissertation uh, researches or uh, creative creative uh, cri literary criticism i should say so, so that's all for the materials and assessment in teaching poetry. Thank you very much for listening.